Hi, I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Cindy. And we're here with another Feeding Frenzy for uh, Course and Weight Loss, and we're still on Lesson 5. Right. So, the last video we made, we decided to take a little time with this one because it was a little harder for us. Mm -hmm. And today, we're still in that space of taking more time with this one. So, um, I think this would be a good time to... Um, fill in with our trainer David talking about when it clicked for him and um, uh, when when he discovered that God was in this as well and I think that would be good for today. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Alright, so tell me about when it made when you got the connection. Yes, um, I always tell the story I tell everybody that um, I sat in school going to class and uh, one day, or one class in the morning, we would learn about the physical body and how we move and things, our organ system things and function. And then in the afternoon class, I would have the nutrition component. In the morning, I'd learn about muscles and what energy they use or what micronutrients, carbs, fats, uh, vitamins, and things that they use. And I'd be like, okay, that's really interesting. And then in the afternoon, it would be the nutrition to say, this is where uh, vitamin K comes from, dark green vegetables. This is where B comes from, from uh, plants and animal protein, things like that. So I was sitting there thinking, I was like, oh my goodness, like, it just kind of hit me all at once. And it's like, if I'm a person that grew up in a, in a household and a family to where my dad worked, my mom stayed at home, and then my mom went to work, and then we were kind of in our little meal segment here where we'd have green beans, corn, and mashed potatoes. And so I didn't like zucchini, I didn't like squash, I didn't like broccoli and cheese. I wouldn't eat different things because I just didn't like it. I just didn't care for it. It's like, I don't want to eat that. Went to college, learned, sitting there one day and realized that, oh my goodness, all these things that grow naturally from the earth are all put here, if you believe, by Howard Power. And somebody here that um, puts it there for us to consume and for us to have and for us to take into our bodies and nourish it because your body will not function without it. And I said at that moment, I was like, it's hard for you to think, who, I don't care who you are, where you come from, what you do, to not have or not think about something else and somebody else that look over you and have something that dwells with inside of you to, to continue on to, to me to, to be in this life and to continue to be a part of this life that we're given here. And it just really opened my eyes to a lot of things. And you take it one step further, talk about the human body in itself and how our bodies move and how our bodies react and what happens inside of our bodies that now in science that we still don't know about we're still learning every day and it's the things that are here and the things that happen it's like how can you not think or believe or, <laughs> or how can you not take just um, an idea or a thought of a notion that there has to be something greater than us just here by ourselves that there has to be something that makes it all work it makes it all come together mm -hmm. and I do believe that because it's all there for us and mm -hmm. for you to sit there and say I don't want to eat spinach because I don't like it or I don't like bananas because I don't like the texture it's like oh like you, you like it because you need to eat it. It's good for it. <laughs> and if you don't like that, you need to find something that you do like because it's all there for you. And we, honestly, if we're smart enough, and a lot of us aren't anymore, we're smart enough we can walk through any forest or any plain or any any place on earth and find something to nourish our bodies because we, we eat to live. We don't live to eat. We don't live for Friday night at 7 o'clock to go meet at the restaurant. But when our family comes to town, we don't meet and wait for them to come so we can all sit down and have a big meal. That's not what we're really designed for. We're designed to eat so we can live for the next next hour or two. Not just to live to meet over food, but it's just how our society has become. And it's really hard for people because it, we're bombarded all the time by food and things, and uh, deals and coupons and groupons and things. It's like, you know, it's like it's hard for people. Uh, but you have to have that within yourself. Talk to me about the amount of calories that you should consume when you're exercising and when you're not. It's a good question, too. Uh, we hit on a second ago about a diet. Um, people, when you start to exercise, they think they need to eat a lot of less calories and start exercising a lot more. And that's really almost counterintuitive because if you stress your body with work, your body has to have energy to perform that work. So if you stress your body by taking in less calories, then you're stressing your body by not getting the amount of energy that it's been used to. Mm -hmm. You add the work on top of it, so now you're creating this deficit of energy coming in and then energy going out and your body will actually stress. In the beginning it sounds real good because your body has to react and has to make things happen so it'll start to do some things like release some water weight, uh, burn some more fat which is what, we're, what we want to do. But then over time, I believe anything over six to eight weeks, 12 weeks, uh, you start to stress your body. 
and over time your body has to make that deficit up so it will in return start shedding muscle and start storing more fat which is a, what we said is counterintuitive what we want. Yeah. So when you start training, it depends on what kind of training you're doing, what kind of what kind of uh, goals or um, achievements that you want to have. It's like you have to have the acquired amount of energy coming in and also have the stimulus to train because like I said, we want to build our metabolism. We want to build our muscle and not just lose weight because mm -hmm. weight is just mass. Like you take off your clothes, cut your hair, do different things, like cut off one of your arms, you'll lose more weight. <laughs> But that's, that's not true. what we want. That's true. Right? Yes. We want to lose body fat. So there's a distinction there that we have to know. And you have to have that amount of calories to have the energy to burn the fat that we want. Mm -hmm. Your body wants to store fat because it wants to have the energy. And you can't do things to your body to make uh, not be able to store fat and not have energy. So you have to be able to do the things that are required. And it takes time to figure out. It can't just happen by reading um, a little um, thing in a magazine and say, okay, that's it. That's going to work for me. Because it won't always work for everybody. So tell me about, you, you also talked to us about the different phases. And this really helped me stick with it, especially in the winter months when we weren't really working on burning weight. But you'd have different phases here. Can you talk right. to me about the different I, phases? Uh, I spent my time, a few years, uh, going to school mm -hmm. and learning about the human body and how humans move through space and time. Right. And how the organs and the organ systems work and how we uh, burn and store energy. And then I could sit in here one day and was frustrated about a client that just left. And I was like, man, you know what? I was like, this is a process. I was like, things have to happen. And so in 10 minutes, I spent five years in a master's degree in school learning about, or in college learning about this stuff. And in five minutes, I wrote that up on the wall. <laughs> and it takes, it's a process. You first have to be aware of what you're doing and how it affects your body. Because everything you've done up until the day that, I tell people, until the day you decide that you want to change, it's like that's gotten you to that point. So now we have to start this process to get to where we want to be. Mm -hmm. The whole first phase is body awareness. And it takes time to learn your nutrition, to learn your body, to learn the exercises that we need to do to make a difference. I said, while you're doing that, it takes four to six weeks for the, for the body to change or adapt to the stimulus. While you're doing that, the second phase that you'll get into is your metabolism will get better. Because if you show up and do your structured physical activities two to four days a week, 30 to 50 minutes at a time, you will start to develop a more metabolism where you start to get stronger mm -hmm. and you start to get more agile and you will start to be able to burn more calories per workout. Mm -hmm. As we're doing that, after about 8 to 12 weeks, we should all start to see and have a measured result. Everybody wants to get toned. Everybody wants to be in shape. Everybody wants to lose body fat. So that's where I got the idea of, of the, the um, workouts and such is because after 8 to 12 weeks, we should be able to look back and measure a difference. We should be able to measure a difference in body fat. If you don't see a difference in body fat, you should be able to measure a difference in strength and conditioning. And if you show up to your workouts, I promise that'll happen. Mm -hmm. But at the end of eight to 12 weeks, if you haven't lost the body fat you want and you're working out, it's not because you're not benefiting. It's because it'll probably be because you're not getting the calorie intake or the amount of nutrition that your body needs to induce that fat loss. And that's why it's a process that everybody has to learn. Everybody's an individual. Mm -hmm. Everybody's different. And because you pull something out of a magazine or because you go to a group class or such, it can be different for each individual within that group because we're all kind of different. Mm -hmm. And then you guys, what you guys are talking about, which is really important, it all comes from within and from within yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to find that from within yourself because nobody can do it for you. Nobody can motivate you. Nobody, nobody can do it for you. So I have a question. If um, I lost a lot of, well, when I was before 40, I could just exercise and the weight would fall off. That's right. And now I have a whole lot more trouble doing that. Mm -hmm. But I can go on a diet diet and I can lose the weight. That's the only way I've found that I could lose the weight. And so I did that, lost 40 pounds in four months, four, five months. But I gained it right back. Yes. You know, it, um, so tell me, why do... Why do I need to exercise while I'm dieting? Or is it better to change the diet or change the exercise or both? Yeah, uh, if you ask me that question, I'm going to tell you how I think and feel about it. To me, diet is a dirty four-letter word. Mm -hmm. It's a word that I do not like to use. And when I do use it, I always say diet. Because to me, a diet is not something you do. You don't do it for 10 days. You don't do it for 30 days. You don't do it for, for an amount of time. A diet is what you do every day how you nourish your body mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. therefore when you talk about when you were younger it's usually because we're more active and it's usually because we have a higher metabolism so we have more muscle mass and I, I saw your video the other day where you talked about this you hit on that about um, before when you were younger is that as we age we lose muscle mass automatically mm -hmm. 
and it's called getting old. And it happens <laughs> to everybody. Mm -hmm. We lose our functions. We lose um, our ability to move. We get slow. Mm -hmm. uh, we start to even uh, hump over and stuff. Over. Yeah, it just happens, and it's just part of it. Um, if you continue to exercise, you, as we age, you turn. Um, we're born, and we get we get uh, bigger. We grow. Um, we get stronger. When you hit about 28 to 32. Your bones and your body becomes right to its, um, that's its like breaking point, or that's the hump of life, the life curve. After 28 to 32, bones start to get weaker and brittle. Muscles start to lose their um, strength and endurance, and we start to, that's when we start to really the aging process. From that time, from your 30s, and until if you live long enough to be 60, 70, 80, you will automatically lose more muscle mass and lose more metabolism and gain more body fat. It's just natural. So if we can exercise, and keep our fitness level up, then you're not going to fall so far down so quick. And uh, some people, depending on their lifestyle, depending on their nutrition, um, will live to 50, 60, and they get some type of disease, or retire at 60, 65, and then pass away a few years later because they're not moving or they're not active. So we have to stay active, to continue to nourish your body, continue to keep your metabolism good, and also continue to keep your strength and endurance up so you can maintain and keep a function in life. So when we first started, there were a lot of things, especially since you and I have totally different body types. There were things that <laughs> right. Cindy could do that I couldn't do. Sure. But you helped me to understand that not every exercise is impossible because you can always modify it. That's exactly can right. Can you talk about that? Yeah, the thing about the exercises is, is we have two arms, two legs, uh, stomach and back. So we only can only move in certain ways. But if you take the body and you take the planes of the body, you take gravity on Earth, we can manipulate how the body moves in space and time. Some people naturally can move themselves better through space and time. That's a gift, or that means they're more of a natural athlete. Mm -hmm. Others, uh, others of us can't really do that, but we can do a lot of other great things like uh, math problems and uh, <laughs> you know, uh, coding on internet things. Talking like that, about me whatever. now. <laughs> and it just depends on the person. But um, if you have once again the structure of the physical activity you can manipulate or you can modify any exercise that any person can do. If they have an attitude and a willingness to try, mm -hmm. then we can do anything we want to. You just got to have that, that want to and that drive in yourself. And it is, does come from within. And you can't really anybody really whip or scream or yell at you enough. You got to want to do it yourself. That's true. And I do believe that. But we can always modify if you have a, like a bad bone or joint or something or as you get stronger, you want to challenge yourself and you want to keep taking those steps because mm -hmm. that's how we progress. Because once your body gets used to it, you lose the benefit of it. That's why people that walk or start to walk after so long, they stop to see the results or they get bored with it. It's because you have to keep pushing that progression to help mm. keep changing your body. And as your body changes, you have to change with that or everything will become stagnant. It's so. important to acknowledge whatever feelings or emotions are coming with this. Mm -hmm. And if whoever is walking with us on this feels like, you know, hey, I've got two or three emails here, but I'm behind you. I don't think there is such thing as a behind mm -hmm. in this. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just not. There's the, play, the pace that I go and the pace that you go and the pace somebody else goes, but there is no behind. Right. So I guess I would just say wherever you're at, just honor the time that it takes for these changes to take place and mm -hmm. to take effect. You know, we're we're doing the same too. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is a process and it's, it's a, it takes a lot of processing mm -hmm. to get where we want to be. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get done with this and say, okay, we're done with that and see no change. Right. And I want to honor the changes that we feel are going on. And it's not yeah. just you, I feel them too. And maybe part of it's our own exhaustion from what else, from all the other things that are going on at the same time. But the point is, that's where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think we need to honor that. Mm -hmm. And I think other people need to honor where they're at as well. Definitely. And, um, there is no judgment here as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. So we'll do what we got to do. Mm -hmm. That's, That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Very good stuff. Shrink, shrink. <laughs>